It's early afternoon on the roof of the Royal London Hospital and the emergency helicopter is ready to take off on a call out to an unusual accident in Kent. Fire crew, got a thumbs up and we're going to 224. The pilot has been given the map reference for the incident by operations officer Matt Reynolds. Someone's falling off a horse down in uh, Biggin Hill Way. When you see the patient back, they're right in front. Don't know at the moment, no idea. All the, all the, the report, only report we've got is uh, fall from horse. That's it. Fall from a horse through request. We're about to. Orpington. I've got a bit of copy, Mike's uh, Airborne 59. Should be overhead in about seven minutes. Because of the intensity of the job, trauma doctors selected for the helicopter service only stay for six months. On board today is Dr. Steve Oakey, who is in his final week with HEMS. Steve has spotted a familiar landmark from the air. There's my house. With a football field. With the bottom right corner, there's those little blocks of houses. That's my, just see it's my back window now. Landmark from the air. There's my house. With a football field. With the bottom right corner, there's those little blocks of houses. That's my, just see it's my back window now. Is that a milkman outside? <laughs> Steve is assisted on this call by paramedic Paul Woodrow. As the helicopter heads for the scene, they receive information from a local ambulance crew that the accident happened almost an hour ago. The original call was at 13.15. This should have gone by now. Wow. Well, if it's in the middle of nowhere. How long it took to find that? Yeah. It's in the middle of nowhere, probably. I just heard it's been 50, five, zero minutes. Okay, three minutes to the overhead. So uh, it might have taken a while for the crew to find this woman in the first place, she pulled off a horse, so the first hour is almost up. That hour is quite important. Yeah, that's when you can make the biggest difference oh, to right, people right, that trauma. Right. Because medical care given during this first hour greatly improves the patient's chances of recovery, doctors call it the golden hour. Here's the ambulance. About uh, 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock? Yeah, ambulance. About 3 o'clock now on your right hand side. Oh, uh, I've got it hidden in the, the, in the trees. In the trees. Oh, there's, there, there's the crew there by that hedge. Yeah, we got there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good to go. Thank you. Thank you. 54 year old Kate Close has been thrown from her horse in an isolated country lane. It looks as though the horse may have kicked her in the head and the ambulance crew on scene are very concerned about her injuries. Do you know where she's come from? Where was the horse? Or... Well, she's coming back home. She's, so she's been coming along this track. This way. Right. Yeah. And it's been some time ago. That one Kate, no, right. concentrate, Kate. Concentrate. Is that, was she found straight away? Yeah, love, another lady on a horse. Um, right. Virtually behind her. So saw it happen. OK. Roughly, yeah. Kate. Kate, hello. Look at Steve hello. again, Doctor. Now look, you've, you've had a bit of a bump on the head. All right. Listen to me, Kate. Listen to me. No, no, it up. You've had a bit of a bump on the head. Oh, Jesus. And we can't let you set up because of your head, and you may have hurt your neck as well. All right. We're going to give you something to make all the pain go away in just a second. But we've got to do it properly. All right. So just hang on in there for two seconds. You're doing really well. All right. Come on, Bob. Come right. on. It won't be long. Kate, it won't be long. Let's all set up. Kate, Kate, you, Kate, Kate, still. you Kate. can't. Kate, don't fight now. Don't Kate, fight now. Kate, stay nice and still, darling. Kate. Kate is becoming increasingly confused and aggressive, symptoms typical of a head injury. But the team must keep her still to prevent further injury, so Steve decides to anaesthetise her. Just lay still for me, Kate. Kate, you'll be able to sit up in a minute. Five minutes. You right there, Paul? We're going to crack on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. If, can you give all of the big one, followed by the little one? All right, Kate, we're going to pop you off to sleep now, right, and look after your head for you. To take away all that pain. The paramedics administer the first of the drugs to put Kate to sleep, and Steve waits for it to take effect. It's all going. It's all going. There we go. The problem with head injuries is they don't get so much oxygen in. In this stage, you can see she's very agitated, which I guess is not normal for her. No, and what we're doing is popping this tube down. <laughs> this process, called intubation, allows Steve to get more oxygen into Kate's lungs and her brain. 
It's now well over an hour since Kate's accident, and the team must get her to hospital as soon as possible. Back at the Royal London, another call has come in to Medic 2, Dr. Pete Lemann. Matt, it's Peter. There's a possible Medic 2 job. But we'll, we'll need to go uh, in the car if it's to go because uh, Steve's flying this head injury back, okay? Okay. Peter's been called to an accident involving a child at a school in South London. It'll take about 10 minutes to get there in the emergency car. Okay, lifting off the tree. One strike, two strike, three. Back at the horse riding accident, Steve and the team have stabilised Kate enough to fly her back to the Royal London for an emergency brain scan. The back is airborne, uh, 1015. OK, landed at 14.09 and lifted at 14.44. Right, this side of the half air. I wanted to try and crack on with that because you've already been there for so long. How old as well? Yeah. Now that's fairly typical of a head injury, isn't it? Of her yeah, you can see her trying to fight to sit up, which was a classic sign of agitation. Not really aware of what's going on. Just wants to get up and walk away. Which, and if you let her, you don't know if she's got a cervical spine injury and she could move around and do herself some serious neurological damage. One, five. At the school in South London, Pete has now arrived in the emergency car. Hello. Hiya. Eleven-year-old Delenn Moore was trampled when she fell over in a crowd of school children rushing to the playground. Yeah. She is still conscious, but complaining of pain in her head and neck. My name's Peter. Right, I'm one of the doctors from the London Hospital. Yeah, it's a hurting. Where's it hurting? My neck and my head. Your neck and your head. Yeah. Do you feel sick? Yeah. Does it hurt when you breathe? No. No. Do you know what I want to do? I want to give you something to take the pain away. Okay. No needles or anything like that. Okay. Going to give you some medicine, all right? But you, but you don't have to worry; it won't hurt anything. It's going to make you feel a bit, a bit sleepy, okay? Okay. Because Delenn is so distressed, Pete decides to give her painkillers, which will also calm her down. Does that hurt then, killing? Does it hurt? Yeah. yeah. That's just the collar around your neck, okay? Right. It's the collar around you. Keep your neck nice and still, okay? Back at the Royal London, Steve has arrived with Kate Close in the helicopter. Although they don't yet know the full extent of her injuries, they know from experience that if she does need surgery, she stands the best chance of recovery if she gets into theatre quickly. It happened at one o'clock, it's now three. So she was in Bridal Park in the middle of nowhere. I think it took a quarter of an hour for the 999 call to go in, that went in at quarter past one. It then took a long time, like half an hour or more, I think, Very for um, Orpingtons. So half an hour more for the um, ambulance to find it, because it's up a little country lane and then a couple of hundred yards up a bridle track. So as soon as they saw her, they called us. With Steve making his way down to Resus, the helicopter is now free to collect Dr. Pete Lemann and his patient, Delenn, from the school where she had her accident. Heads up, Robert, copy Mike Sierra. We're airborne, should be overhead in about uh, seven minutes. Once down in recess, Steve briefs the trauma team about Kate's condition. She seems to be an isolated head injury. GCS was 12, but very agitated and combative. So she's been anaesthetised, intubated, ventilated, no cardiorespiratory dysfunction. Um, so that's about it, really. Just isolated head, GCS 12, two hours old. She has been fine. I couldn't find anything else bony wrong with her at all, and her chest was fine. Thank you. Steve hands over to senior A&E consultant Dr. Alistair Wilson. The team immediately check Kate for other injuries and start to prepare for a CT scan of her head. And let's, let's keep her covered as much as we can. Everybody get to the right place. At least just when you have a moment, can we get the contact lenses out and pop them in pots?